Welcome to Westchester Talk Radio. I'm Laura Smith, and we're being produced today by Shark Creative, and we're brought to you in part and made possible by our title sponsor, Entergy, Indian Point Energy Center, supporting the community through April 2021. Also, our SharkCast sponsors are Lapolis Electric, Don't Be Left in the Dark, Hightower Westchester, Fiduciary Wealth Advisors, and White Plains Hospital. Thank you, everyone, on the front line. Well, I'm so excited because uh, we had spoken uh, last week with with, uh, Rose Kappa, who is heading up what is the first annual Westchester Women's Summit, which I am just, I get thrilled every time I think about it, that something like this exists and the first ever is taking off tomorrow the 9th and the 10th of uh, September of the Westchester's Women's Summit this year for the very first one ever uh, Rose had an amazing way of pulling off the event virtually as uh, as many people are doing with their events and so I'm so excited to have somebody who is not only the President and CEO of United Hebrew of New Rochelle, but she is also uh, a gold sponsor for the first ever Westchester Women's Summit. Rita Mobley, thank you so much for joining us today, and I'm so excited to hear all about your involvement with Westchester Women's Summit and a little bit of your story, which I find really inspiring, and your background to be um, something I think that's important for people to hear about. Rita, thank you so much. Oh, this is such a privilege and a pleasure. Thank you. And and my shout out to Rose for putting together an absolutely unbelievable summit of just such a cadre of women from Westchester that I'm so privileged to be a part of. Absolutely. The, and the uh, wonderful keynote speakers, Susan Rice, Gretchen Carlson. I mean, this is big stuff and um, really uh, wonderful people that make Westchester uh, really the most dynamic, I think, a county and community to live in. But you're one of them. And being the president and CEO of United Hebrew of New Rochelle, you're the first female uh, ever president and CEO of United Hebrew. Tell us about that. Um, it, it's a milestone and it's important. How did you break the so-called proverbial glass ceiling, Rita? I uh, was privileged to be hired here right out of graduate school, and I started the Human Resources Department many years ago, worked my way up the ranks. Um, I had a, uh, a mentor in the previous uh, person in my position, and he believed in me and gave me a chance, and uh, I was very, very fortunate to learn from the people that I worked with. The uh, men and women at that point that I worked with were so generous with their knowledge that when I sat for my administrator's license exam, uh, it was okay. I did okay. Uh, Just got one question wrong. It still bothers me that I got that one question (laughs) wrong. (laughs) After all these years. I've been here ever since. And it is not only the place that I work, but it's, it's my home. And the seven and a half acre campus here is where I want to be even on the worst of days. And part of that, most of that, is because of the wonderful people that I'm privileged to serve with. So. You're very fortunate to be part of a culture in a company that sounds like from the get-go has been supportive, generous, um, truly allowing women to succeed. Yes. You know, not every company has that, but you're a part of that, and um, you, I'm sure, have carried on that legacy throughout um, your tenure as as the CEO and president. And and United Hebrew of New Rochelle, a very special place. Let's tell people a little bit about that beautiful campus you're talking about and, and the services you provide there. We are a comprehensive uh, care campus that serves the uh, people, mostly people over 65, everything from independent living to skilled nursing, uh, including assisted living, including care at home, including uh, low-income housing uh, and skilled nursing. But the skilled nursing pavilion also includes uh, rehab. So people can go home after they have gotten better post-surgery, post-stroke. And uh, we are privileged and proud about the fact that we can get people so much better that they can go home and have a wonderful and active life. I always tell the anecdotal story that I've had three relatives here for post-surgery rehab. They're all still talking to me. So I consider myself lucky and uh, 
all of the credit for the success of our five-star campus is due in total part, in total, to the wonderful and caring staff upstairs on the floors. They are just an amazing group of men and women, mostly women. Mostly women. Mostly really? Women. Is, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I would say that 90% of our staff are women. Uh, I would say to you that through just the prov providence, uh, whoever, guiding our selection, all of the lines of business, and there are seven corporations on the campus, all of the lines of business are headed by women. Um, that, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's wonderful. And, and, and I'm sure, obviously, you have, a, there's a standard. It's not just because they're women. It's because they're women with certain qualities and abilities and uh, that um, you have chosen them. Mm -hmm. In general, um, are you, uh, is United Hebrew like other campuses of such where the caregiving is usually by, by women? Is that why there are so many women in it? Or is there just such an incredible amount of, of talented women in the workforce in Westchester County right now? I think that it's a good combination of both, but I think that our campus works as well as it does. And I think this is generally true for most um, places that are giving care to others, that women are known primarily for being nurturing individuals. We have nurturing individuals. They helped me to write our mission statement, which is very, very simple. We are kind people that care for you like family. And oh. it's as simple and as complex as that. So when you come here, we greet you like you're a member of the family, and hopefully we can send you home if that's what your diagnosis is, is getting us to. So um, it's, it's all a part of that. You know, I learned everything about being a leader from my mother who had an eighth grade education. And she taught me, she taught me from the time that I was little, kindness never hurts anyone. You know, harsh words can never be taken back, but kindness never hurts anyone. And I learned that and I watched her survive when, when dad died, when I was 11 or something like that. And we were the two poorest people you'd ever meet living in the Bronx. And she made it work. She was a woman of the future. That inspires me to such a level. Was, was she born in this country or did she come from another? No, she was born here. Had an, as I told you, had an eighth grade education. The day after she finished grammar school, she got on the subway down in the Bronx and worked in a sweatshop. God That's what she did. And uh, she made it work when my father passed away and it was just the two of us. I always say to the people, I know what it's like. We were the first two people on Medicaid and food stamps. That's how really? we survived. And, and the only reason I got an education is because my alma mater believed that um, they had other plans for me. So I, I got scholarships. And that's what she told me. She said, if you want to go to school, I can't afford it, you get a scholarship. I, I'm one of those women that was blessed to have a woman in my home as a role model. And Absolutely. Yeah. And it's Inspiring story. I have chills. And your father passing at such a young age for you, do you think that that had anything to do with you choosing a field of health care? Absolutely. I've been asked that question several times. Um, my father was in what was then known as the Harkness Pavilion down at Columbia uh, Presbyterian in Manhattan. And he was there, he was dying over the course of a year and a half. So he was in the hospital for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And I watched how people cared for him as a child. I was maybe nine or 10 when he got sick. And I said to my mother, I'd like to help people one day. And you know what? I got to do that. And the tradition continues because I have a daughter who um, became a nurse practitioner because she grew up here and watched nurses take care of people. It's the power of being a woman. It's the power of being a caring woman. The tr traditions that I see, what I see the people upstairs do, it inspires me every day. It really is an incredible story, but one that's also 
has to do with your abilities to make it into the role of president and CEO, you must have an incredible business sense as well. Nurturing, caregiving, all the right vision is important, but you have to have great business sense to be able to be in that role. Well, I have a lot of help from a lot of people who uh, give me a lot of great information but at the end of the day, you're right, sitting in the big, big girl's chair is kind of a lonely thing, and you try to make the best decisions that you can so that you are helping the greatest number of people. Um, I think that it's something you learn on the job, and it's something that I, when I teach other people, uh, interns or whoever come, comes into our organization, I tell them never to forget where you started from. Because once you get to where you want to go, you don't want to have burned any bridges behind you. And that's the best advice I can give to people. Yes, it's so true. I, I teach myself and I, I frequently say to the students, remember as you are climbing the ladder, how you treat people and, and, and being the best person you can be because you can see them just as easily on the way up as you can on the way down. Um, always be kind. And, and you know, always it's kind of hard to get up. It's not so hard to sort of come down. You can come right down that ladder. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I do believe in that. And, and I, I think the idea of what Rose did for the Women's Summit is just such an exciting event for so many reasons, not the least of which is that she put it together like this so that we can be together virtually, even though we can't be together in person. And how exciting is that? It really is incredible, Rita. I mean, people can still actually, I believe, um, pay and register for the event up until midnight tonight, I think. Yes. 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 And then uh, all day Wednesday, all day Thursday, they're going to have opportunities to do things virtually that they probably weren't even sure existed. We all know Zoom now, right? Um, we which sure is do. Yes. But um, Rose has worked it out so that people are literally going into workshops that they have chosen from a menu of incredible uh, events put on by different people and they can choose which ones they're going to and she has them going off in, in separate rooms and then coming together for the keynote speakers. It's really phenomenal. I mean, she she, she really did yes. it all the way. And during a pandemic and during this situation so, just shows the kind of business leaders we have here in Westchester in women. What do you think about the women that are coming into the workforce now? Do you have any great pieces of advice for any of them? And do you see a lot of hope for our future of women leaders here in Westchester County? I do. I, I, I certainly do. I think that there are many opportunities in some of the larger corporations in Westchester. You spoke about Entergy being a sponsor. Uh, but I think that there are also opportunities in some of the smaller arenas. Uh, there are so many women-owned businesses in Westchester that have become so successful. And I look to them and I think hard work, effort, and kindness always pays off. It really does. Never forget your roots. Always re remember where you're going and how you're going to get there. And, and, and I think we will all succeed. I am privileged to be a part of the women's group in Westchester. Yes. Well, the first annual Westchester Women's Summit is happening on Wednesday and Thursday, the 9th and 10th of September. It's happening virtually. Keynote speakers Gretchen Carlson and Susan Rice. What an amazing event. So many women have signed up, over 300 participants at this point, but still chance to register tonight. Go Google the Westchester Women's Summit and you'll find the website there and it's all ready to go for you to register yourself and be a part of this first ever spectacular event. And Rita Mobley, you and United Healthcare, uh, United Hebrew, sorry, uh, Geriatric here in New Rochelle, being a gold sponsor because you see the value of what this event is going to bring forth. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you for the work that you do there, that people know that when it comes time for their loved ones to have either long-term care or rehabilitation and the many, many services that you provide there. Um, thank you for providing a, a family place where people can feel safe to be with 
with their loved ones and, and where they can thrive as well. You are such an example and such a wonderful inspiration. Thanks for being with us today well, Laura, on Westchester Talk Radio. This has, been, this has been a privilege and a pleasure, and thank you. Rita Mobley, the first woman president and CEO at United Hebrew of New Rochelle. By all means, check out the Westchester's Women's Summit tomorrow and Thursday and be a part of something that is brand new, but is going to be many, many years in the making, I have a feeling. We're being brought to you once again by Westchester Talk Radio and produced by Shark Creative. And we're made possible as well by Park Sterling Realty, Michael Labriola Incorporated Landscape Design and Construction. And we always want you to be sure that you can subscribe to see more stories of inspiration of our county here in Westchester on Westchester Talk Radio. Go to YouTube and uh, click on uh, Shark Creative. That's how you get more of these locally inspired stories. And we want you to be a part of it. And we're thanking you uh, for joining us today. Rita Mobley, thank you once again.